and I'm going to share my screen. Um, this is uh, her ladyship, Marion Fo uh, Forrester. Um, and to class today is how to teach a class in the SEA. Okay, welcome. Uh, a little bit about me. I've been in the SEA for about 21 years now. I've lived and taught classes in four kingdoms. And uh, throughout that time, I've taught online since the pandemic. I've taught in person, one-on-one, -on -one, larger groups, known world symposiums, lectures, hands-on classes. I've done quite a few classes, so um, hopefully I can impart a little bit of wisdom today. I am the current arts and science minister, just started that. So if you have any um, comments or suggestions on how we can improve the arts and sciences in the Outlands, please let me know. So we'll go through the stages of teaching a class and what to do at each stage uh, to get a successful class. And uh, a lot of it is just practice, but um, generally you will pick a topic. Uh, I suggest making a preliminary plan before you let the organizer know what you want to teach so that you can fill out their uh, information because they will ask you certain things about um, how you want to teach the class and all of that kind of stuff. Then plan and practice what to do right before class, during and after. And I am all about, if you have a question, just ask. Um, you don't have to uh, type it or anything, just ask. I'm fine with being interrupted. Okay, picking a topic. Pick a topic of something that you know about. Everybody is an expert on something. Everybody has something they can teach about. So pick something you're excited about. Maybe it's a project that you just did. Maybe it's something you've been researching for a while or have been doing for a while, but we all have something we can teach. Uh, also think about who your audience is. Are you going to be teaching at a known world symposium where you're going to have people of a lot of different experience levels? Are you teaching at a local event where you may just have beginners? Uh, think about who you're talking to. Also, you can use multiple research sources, but you don't have to. Um, this morning I taught a class on one book and that is fine. So the first, the next thing you should do is to get a preliminary plan. Think about what format you're going to be teaching in. What do you need? Describe your class. How long is it gonna take? How many people can you teach to? And are there any age restrictions? This is a good time to also make a class outline. And the above questions are all things that you're probably going to be asked when you volunteer to teach a class. So let's go step by step. And because teaching can be kind of stressful, I am peppering this with cat pictures. So think about if you're teaching in person or online. If you're in person, are you gonna be inside or outside? There are gonna be different considerations. Are you going to have shade? Is it going to be windy? <laughs> Is there water nearby if you need to do some washing up or do you need to haul your own? Um, if you're inside, what kind of things do you need? Do you need tables, desks, just chairs? Um, do you need different technology like a projector or something like that? If you're online, what tech platform are you teaching on? Is it Zoom, Google? Is it something that you know or something you need to get familiar with? Is it going to be recorded? Uh, if it is going to be recorded, think about what images you're using. Some um, copyright laws do not allow for publishing. And if this is a class that's going to be recorded and put up on YouTube, you may have more problems than if you're just teaching uh, in person or without a recording. Are you going to have a moderator, somebody to um, take questions for you and um, 
help you with any technical problems you may have. Next, what do you need? Do you need any technical things like an arm to hold your camera if you're doing a, a demonstration class? Do you need lighting if you're in a really dark area? Do you need a projector if you're in a classroom or tables or electrical outlets or ventilation? Um, do you know how to use your tech? <laughs> Practice if you don't. Um, do you need any items to display? Is this something you need to work on or something you already have? If you're teaching in person, uh, what kind of class materials or hands-on displays are you going to have? And this is a great time to make a packing list. Um, I forget things, especially if it's a very involved class like pigment making. So I will have a packing list saved on my computer that I can print off each time that I teach the class and make sure that I'm not forgetting something because some things are easy to pick up maybe in town and some things are not. And how much space do you need? Is this an active class like um, a dance class or fighting class? You may need a lot more room than if you're just doing illumination. But even if you're doing illumination, you may need a little bit of elbow room. Describe your class, give it a title. Um, it's fun to make a fun title for your class, but make sure that it's something that people can understand what the class is about. You don't want them searching the schedule for your class when you say that you're teaching about a certain topic and you're like, but I don't see anything under that description. Write a description, tell what you're going to talk about. Um, give people an understanding of exactly what you're talking about. How many people can you accommodate? Um, are you comfortable with big amounts of people? If you're speaking at a known world event, you could have 30, 40, 50 people in your class. Um, make sure you're comfortable with that. Are there any age limits? Is it something that requires a certain amount of dexterity? Probably not great for little children. Is it something with toxic chemicals? Um, or is it an adult topic? I mean, those are great, but you probably don't want it um, attended by everyone. Also think about timing. How long is it gonna take? Uh, is one hour going to be enough or do you need more? When do you want to teach? Are you better in the morning or afternoon? Or do you want your classes back to back or do you need a little bit of time between them? Next cat picture. This is one of our foster kittens right now. This is Wolfberry. Uh, speaking on uh, how many people can you accommodate? Are you gonna have enough mat class materials for them? and enough space. Next step is plan and practice. So you've already volunteered, you have your topic, you know about what you're going to do, make sure you have your outline. If you've already done it, this is the time to kind of flesh it out. Prepare your presentation, make a handout, uh, ask questions if you have any of the event organizers, practice your class and promote it, make sure that you dress appropriately. Planning, make an outline. <laughs> I always have an outline, even if I am teaching online and I have slides, I have the outline next to me just in case my slides don't work. Um, think about if you have enough to teach or if you need to research more. When I'm doing my outline, that's when I think about these things. And if there's an area that needs a little bit of beefing up and I need to read another paper or do something like that, do you have too much for the time you're allowed? Uh, this may be the time that you need to pare things down. And do you need to purchase anything? Are you going to do a display, class materials, things like that? Um, think about what you're going to need. Next, prepare your presentation. Is it going to be online or in person? You're gonna have different uh, things you need to do. If you're online, are you going to do PowerPoint slides? 
if you do, make sure that your font is not too small, weird color, distracting. Are you going to have weird transitions that are going to just distract people? Are you trying to play a video? I've seen a lot of problems with this. So make sure you practice ahead of time to make sure that people can hear you on the video. Or are you going to be narrating it? Pictures make your presentation a lot more interesting, but make sure that either you use your own or you have permission to use the photos. If you are using someone else's photos, make sure you put that on there that it's someone else's photo. If you're teaching in person, are you using visual aids? Do you have a display, a poster, a handout, um, something that people can see? Do you need to set anything up ahead of time? Do you need to make the kits or prepare a display at different stages? Uh, next, handouts and business cards can be really great. If you have a lot of information, a handout is great. Make sure you have your contact information on there and your sources because people are going to want them, especially if they have questions or the best thing that happens is you get somebody excited about what you're talking about and they want to do it. So they're going to want to learn and uh, look at the things that you did. Um, make sure you print it off with plenty of time ahead because you run into uh, printing problems a lot of times. These things seem to break down right when you need them or submit them to the event organizers so that they can distribute them. If you don't have a big handout, maybe just business cards are a good way to get your contact info out to people. So you don't have to try and find a piece of paper and write it down every time. When you are doing your planning, make sure to ask questions well ahead of time. You may have questions about uh, what kind of facilities you're going to have at the site. Are you going to have a tent if you're outside or just under the sun? Um, what are the procedures for uh, teaching your class? You know, how are you going to log on? Do you need to uh, make an account ahead of time? Uh, what's your format for teaching? Are you teaching? If you're online, are you doing uh, Google or um, Zoom or something like that? Get a picture. So planning, practice your class, do it again and again, uh, if you have time and if that's the way your brain works. It really does pay. Um, also, if you are teaching maybe a known world class, take a little time and maybe teach at a smaller event and um, practice it. How long does your uh, class take? I tend to speak very quickly, especially when I have a lot of adrenaline when I'm teaching. So I tend to speak faster than I would uh, otherwise. So kind of get an idea of your pacing. Are you going too fast or too slow? Is something missing? Does it make sense? If you can have somebody who doesn't understand your topic watch so that they can ask questions of, I had no idea what that word meant. Can you please define that? And that may be something you need to put in your presentation. Uh, test your tech. <laughs> Make sure you know how to use Google, how to share, uh, how to do your PowerPoint if you're doing that. And you know, if you're going to practice, you may as well do it with a friend. And that is a nice, comfortable way to start. Also, promote your class. As good as your class is, if nobody's there, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if your event is not promoting it, uh, even if they are, you can always forward it on. Uh, promote your class, uh, not only to the event page, but also let your friends know. And that includes your local group in your kingdom and maybe some other kingdoms you are um, friendly with, post it to Facebook special interest groups. Uh, things like the, there's an SEA group for everything, whether it's scribes or 
maybe it might be a group that is not affiliated with the SCA. I know there's a like and dyers uh, page. Um, there, are, and you know, you never know if you may get somebody from outside of the SCA uh, finding something they really enjoy. When you, <laughs> you are planning, make sure you can dress the part. You want to look good, but you also want to be comfortable and wear clothing that's appropriate for your class. This is also something you may want to put in your class description. If you're doing something that could get messy, something that you're working with fire, uh, make sure that people know this so that they can plan accordingly. Uh, you, don't, you may not want things with dangling sleeves, you may not want things that are very fancy. Also, do you need a hat and sunscreen if you're outside? Uh, all things to consider. Right before class, make sure that you are a little bit early. Um, there's always something to take care of. It may be uh, your tech isn't working quite right or you need to talk to somebody ahead of time. Um, Maybe you forget something and you need to run back. Make sure you have enough time. Uh, if you're teaching online, make sure if your uh, moderator does not know you, try and introduce yourself to them and let them know what you need from them. <laughs> and thank you to our moderator today. Uh, if your class, make sure your class is set up the way you need it. You may, if you're doing something messy, you may need to throw down something on the ground uh, so that you do not mess up your nice classroom. Uh, you may need to move tables around, make sure there are garbage cans, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, if you're teaching online, make sure you have permission to share your screen. Uh, that may either require that you are a co-host or that uh, sharing is enabled. Uh, again, make sure you have everything you need class materials, handouts, displays, everything like that. Uh, and <laughs> don't forget to for take care of fluids. Make sure that you have something to drink and go to the bathroom. Uh, the last thing you want is to be trying to talk and uh, you're uncomfortable for one reason or another. Also, when I'm talking and teaching classes, I get a lot of adrenaline and that makes me thirsty. So I kind of try to have at least one mug of water per hour that I'm teaching. Um, if I'm teaching a two hour class, I have two there. You may have to go to the bathroom right after, but at least you uh, can talk. Also, just breathe. Take a minute, calm down, maybe talk to a friend, get comfortable, um, try and relax as much as you can. And before I go on, are there any questions? Feel free to unmute if you have yep. questions. Yep, you can always ask questions at any time. Interrupt me, I am cool with it. Um, not, not so much a question on what you've already covered. Um, are you gonna go through like resources later? Or no, I missed the first 10 minutes. <laughs> I sure can. Uh, I hadn't planned on that, but I am uh, going through my material quite quickly, so we can absolutely do that. Because the only thing I'm thinking so far is like, um, we've done a lot of stuff for teaching in-person classes and like materials and make sure you have everything and practice ahead of time. But like, um, like you and I have discussed doing something virtually, um, like if I wanted to do a hands-on class, um, how, how would I do that here? And um, it's it's just knowing, you know, how to use a document cam, how do you find a document cam, what other resources can you use instead of a document cam. And there's just really not a lot of, or I'm not that I can find resources out there on how to more facilitate a typically hands-on class in a virtual environment. And I would like to see some resources like that. Okay. You know, just like a, these, these are good ways to provide it. These are good things to, to add to it. These are good sources to find it. Here's examples on how to do it. I, I can definitely handle that. Uh, I've got a few more slides and then we'll talk about stuff like that. Okay, during class, 
and this is our foster gooseberry. Uh, first of all, make sure that you welcome people to your class. Let them know what your class is about. Make sure they're at the right class. You wouldn't believe how many people get to your class and are like, oh crap, I thought this was this class. Uh, also, don't apologize for being nervous. Everybody's nervous. I've taught lots of classes and I still get uh, a lot of adrenaline. Let people know how you want questions. Are you somebody who feels comfortable being interrupted? Uh, are questions appropriate at breaks? Or are you somebody who wants to get through your presentation and then have questions at the end? Make sure you introduce yourself and why you're an expert on what you're talking about. Why are you qualified to teach? How long have you been doing this? Um, what have you studied? What is your background? Watch your audience for interest. Um, sometimes that works online and sometimes it doesn't when everybody turns off their cameras. Uh, sometimes it's hard kind of speaking into the void, but uh, if you have somebody you can watch, um, that helps a lot and that'll help you determine your pacing. Leave plenty of time at the end for questions. Uh, it kind of sucks to be rushed and then be like, okay, it's time for your next class, bye. And you have a lot of people who have questions. So try and leave at least five to 10 minutes. And again, just breathe. You've got this. People in the SCA are generally pretty forgiving about weird interruptions on online calls and uh, people just having problems teaching. We are not experts. You are not expected to be an expert on teaching. It will come with time, but don't worry if you make mistakes or if you're really nervous, it'll be fine. After class, make sure you have a little time to answer questions uh, and think about sticking around for a little while. Think about what went right. Was your timing right? What can you improve for next time? Um, and do you need to follow up on any questions afterwards? Do you need to contact somebody with more resources? And perhaps the thing that has taken me the most time to understand for myself is to take some time for self-care. Um, since I, I do get kind of anxious and have a lot of adrenaline going through my body, I usually need at least half an hour after class just to come down take a deep breath and let all the shakes and everything go. <laughs> so that is what I had prepared. So talking about um, like presentation online. Um, for the one kind of hands-on class that I've done, uh, I did a paintbrush making class and uh, to do that class, I did, I used my phone and I had it on, a, um, on an arm that hung over my desk so that people could see my work area. Some people have much more complex arrangements than this with a couple of cameras and they maybe have, uh, logged into the meeting a couple of times, um, and can switch cameras and that kind of thing. I am not that tech savvy. So I just go <laughs> with the cheapest, easiest way I can do that. Um, what other questions did you have? Um, that was pretty much it. Um, I was just asking if you would be uh, willing to provide some sort of documentable, searchable resource, like here's a handout. And these are tools and equipment and places to, or, or other places or other people to talk to. Like, like when we do the scribes night and they were like always say, hey, here's this document cam works really great. I'm like, yeah, not for my budget, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is why I went with the phone arm because that was like 20 bucks on bucks. Amazon and that was the cheapest and easiest because this is not something I plan on doing a whole lot. Um, because, you know, I was supposed to teach a class for today and like, oh, snap. And, but it's like, well, it's like, how do you draw? How do you, and I'm like, how do you, how do you, how do you even do that in this kind of environment without yeah. being able to 
say, well, you need to have a compass and you need to have a that. Um, and base. I have, I have seen people do videos and then they kind of narrate them. I've seen people um, take pictures of each stage and kind of work through it at that, uh, through like a PowerPoint. So it's make it work. <laughs> and I just know that if I have questions, there are other people who also have questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, and the people who are in charge of Atlantia's Collegium, they do hundreds and hundreds of classes and they are very good at tech. Uh, I also know that there is a tech in the SCA symposium, and I assume that that is going to cover some of that. Uh, that is going to be May 1st. Uh, it is, let's see, hosted by the Kingdom of Kaid, and uh, yeah, they're going to go through a whole bunch of technologies Google, Zoom, video editing, uh, PowerPoint, all kinds of crazy tech questions like that. So uh, if you're looking at tech, that's a good place to go to, if you have the time. The only other thing I had to say about something that you said, um, when you say introduce yourself on, and why you're an expert in your class, I think that was my biggest hang up. And, and, and I would like to promote to other people that um, you don't have to be an expert to teach. Is, you know, you know um, they're like, well, well, how can you, why can you do it? Like, because I want to is sometimes good enough. Or sometimes you're like, I'm going to learn about it so I can teach it. Not I know about it, so I'm going to teach it. If that am I making sense? Oh yeah. And and getting past that hurdle is really just a really huge, huge thing. So if you're like, you need to have like some sort of title, or you need to show that you've proven, um, I I, I really like to see us encourage people more. Just like, doesn't matter if you're not an expert. I just do it. Exactly. And some you learn a lot just by teaching it too. You learn how much you don't know and how much you really do. And uh, just how things work sometimes. I started out teaching dance in North Shield about 20 years ago. And a lot of it was just necessity because our group liked to dance, but the closest person was over an hour away. So we learned how to do it and practice makes perfect or at least makes you more comfortable. Where would we be without conversation with each other? No one learns, no one shares, no one gains. I exactly. mean, I'm with you. Any level needs to be engaged in that conversation. And we never know what kind of a background people have. It's, <laughs> you don't have to be a peer to teach. There are people who know some really incredible things outside of the SCA that really help us out. Things like chemistry or just tech or you know, how to do research. It's, everybody has something that they can teach. <laughs> and uh, looking at the chat, everybody has a, a, a story of <laughs> when you do teach something goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> the last known world symposium I taught at online, I had two classes back to back and uh, <laughs> especially when I'm teaching in front of a lot of people and I still have a bit of peer fear even after 20 years uh, I was pretty stressed out and drinking a lot of water and by the end I just prayed for everybody to let me go so I could go to the bathroom so <laughs> things are gonna happen <laughs> yeah and I think in this virtual one too it's it's like well I have time to set something up it was, and, and not get too hung up on that, right? Or like, uh, or like, okay, well, I'm gonna take a five minute break. You guys do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would do that in a live class, right? Yeah. I mean, if you'd be like, oh, I'll be right back. I, I, so it just doesn't make it any different. You know, we're yeah. human. And and you need to eat so when you teach. <laughs> 
You drink plenty. You forget to eat. <laughs> and and people are so forgiving. It's like the beginning of my class this morning. My five year old comes crying up the stairs and up the next set of stairs, and <laughs> and everybody can hear as he's telling about his woes. And it's like, yeah, things happen. Cats walk across in front of you. Kids interrupt and that happens in real life too you get a big windstorm and things blow over it it happens it happens it happens um how do you address when um you said something about making sure people are in the right class um have, have you ever had this one happen to you like they walked into my class and they're like i'm not actually here for the class i'm here so i can sleep in the back <laughs> that I'm using or if I'm a little offended right now like go see someplace else either learn about my thing or don't I chose to be amused and let him sleep but I was like wow yeah I think I'd kind of be like well as long as you don't snore and you're not taking up some room somebody else needs uh sure go ahead like, can I count that class attendance from three to four exactly <laughs> how many people attended Attended or participated? <laughs> I mean, if it's a live event, it could be the only shade on site. So, you know, true. You gotta, true. You gotta let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, or 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 then or what do you do when you don't have anybody attend? <laughs> I've I had mean, that too. So um, how do you how do you handle that? How do you promote that better? How do you move past that how do you to make sure you have more people attend the next time promote 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 and sometimes it just is what happens maybe you're too early in the class in the day too late in the day it's just a light attended class um and sometimes maybe you'll just get one person but sometimes that one person is really interested in what you're doing and uh i had a class like that once and the person is now really into what I was teaching. And it's like, that was so worth it. But yeah, sometimes you don't get anybody and sometimes that's a relief and you go and do something else. And wow, I have time I didn't know I had. Uh, but yeah, sometimes as good as you promote, it's just gonna happen. So another question for you, because I see you're so widely attended, <laughs> um, is, what do you do when, um, if from another personal point of view, um, so obviously if you like to teach, you also like to take classes in your brain. And um, I have had a lot of times where um, my classes that I'm teaching are back to back on the ones I want to take. I'm like, I came here, I taught, I took nothing because it was concurrent with my class every time. Uh -huh. Or make sure you don't teach so many classes that you don't have time to take it for yourself. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it just happens and <laughs> make sure it you flies. <laughs> guess things happen. Yeah, and you know, try and get handouts and, or, you know, try and schedule better or just <laughs> be kind to yourself, I guess. And <laughs> I think one of the reasons why some people don't teach too is they're afraid of people heckling or that one person who knows everything and is in the back correcting you or turns it into their class or something. And, you know, for the most part, people in the SEA are very respectful. Every once in a while, it does happen. Not often, but it does happen. And just be kind to yourself and be kind to them as much as you can, because yeah, we're all people and you never know what's going on. We need those people that run camps that have been around for 30 years. They never leave their camp. They know everything about the SCA and they create so much. You would never know. Like the only people that flaunt it may be other members of their households or ships or whatever. I'd love to see some of those people come out and teach a little bit more. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's that classism where it's perceived. It's not real if you don't let it, you know, ruin it. Yeah. Get out there and give. You know, yeah, cool and, and I've seen some classes in encampments too, and 
if you're comfortable with that, that's great. Um, you may have some people who are a little bit wary about that. It, I don't know, sometimes it feels like you're going into someone's home when you go into their encampment. But yeah, I, I totally think everybody has something to teach and they absolutely should. We're all about sharing. When's the next collegium for the next set of classes? The next one in uh, this room is painting on fabric with Raven Maine. And not not today, but oh. but like the next the next big um, either known world or or. No clue. Oh, um, good God! There's something every day, <laughs> and apparently there's a dirt bike out uh, by my house. Um, <laughs> I know if you want Harold again, Scribble, there's one today. Uh, there are, geez, known world events all the time. The next time I'm going to be teaching is the Known World Science Symposium in June. And that is being hosted by the Kingdom of Atlantia. And you can still sign up now to teach. June's after finals, yeah. maybe. I just went through a whole run of chemistry, so. There you go, there you go. <laughs> they have a whole alchemy track, so. It's like I told the kids in my study group, I'm like, I don't think I'll ever use chemistry on my job, but I absolutely use it when making paints. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, this is why this works. So. Yeah, see, everybody has some. Um, is is this some information that you might be able to post on um the Kingdom ANS page or in the uh, the Kingdom Arts and Science um Kingdom Facebook group? Yep, yep. I'll, As part I'll of definitely, classes. at least the populist group, I'll make sure it's being posted. Um, and the Outlands Arts and Science Facebook group. And uh, we may see about a calendar of things going on other places. That is not a bad idea. I may have to write that down. wrote that in blood didn't you yeah you know it you know it <laughs> it's kind of funny if you make brazil wood ink it looks a heck of a lot like blood <laughs> does it smell good too uh depends what you use to make it uh you can use beer and wine and vinegar so the the beer and wine smell a lot better than the vinegar one that kind of smells toxic. I don't know. Last you said you're not allowed to make it in the house anymore. Yeah, there's a lot of things I'm not allowed to make in the house anymore. <laughs> Garlic glare. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can make it with the wine and the beer, but not the vinegar, the Brazil wood ink. It, it becomes chemical grade. Weapons grade. But, but that's what that's what makes it fun right <laughs> now how so how would you teach something like that um if you wanted to do it so speaking of teaching classes if you were to walk through your process what would your process be if you wanted to say hey we're going to do brazil wood in a class yeah and keep so, it on topic yeah 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 so it depends so i've seen brazil wood ink being taught online and there goes the dirt bike again Okay, uh, so I know Ian the Green taught that and he did a video and a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and doing something like that in person, you know, if we're out at Battlemore, we can be boiling some stuff and making some stuff and uh, it'll probably fit into an hour or two and have a good time. Uh, yeah, it gets a lot more tricky online and how exactly you want to present it in what stages. And some of that stuff you need to kind of prepare beforehand too, um, which is something to always think of. Uh, I do an alchemy and chemistry um, 
color changes in pigments class. And the thing I like to do at the end of that is to have a demonstration which involves soaking Brazil wood and then changing that with different chemicals. And uh, <laughs> you have to remember to do that. <laughs> it works better if you do it the night before, but uh, I found that you can do that about an hour before class. <laughs> Which also better results if you're more prepared. <laughs> Make sure you have an outline and, uh, <laughs> and know your process. I might get with you sometime when I have time because um, Mirabel keeps saying I need to teach parchment making. I'm like, I have no idea how to even break that apart. I mean, you, uh, I, 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 I don't unless like video myself doing it and then share it, but like hands on, I, how, you know, it's, I, I don't even know. So I might have to pick your brain on that sometime. Yeah, it's like a video I could see hands on, you really need something like battle more or something where you have a lot of time well even then you know some of the, the processes take take weeks you know it takes weeks sitting in the line bath to, to process so is it kind of like i have to have three or four in stages yeah like, i don't know i haven't even thought about it and i'm just like yeah. it's just so big so yeah uh, some of my pigment making i do i have examples in stages and have things that people can do at each stage. It's like, you're not going to make a complete lake pigment, but you can do each stage so that you know how to do it at home. I could see something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and you probably don't wanna do that one indoors. <laughs> well, I don't know, it depends on how much I like the people or not. <laughs> I don't know. It only smells a little bad. Yeah, yeah. Not too bad. Not if you no, do it. No, it smells bad. pretty bad. <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> Here's your mentholatum for before class, right under your nose. Honestly, I think the garlic that I made was actually worse because wow. it's so powerful. It's like, I like garlic, but you take, you know, a hundred cloves of garlic and crush them and get all the juice, you know, the stinky essence out of it. Yeah. That, that'll bring tears to your eyes. Garlic for days. Sounds perfect at, a, at an event where there's tons of mosquitoes. Nobody's yeah. getting tagged at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an idea there. <laughs> I have to tell Tim, this is when we're doing it. <laughs> Gulf Wars, garlic press. <laughs> That's what we need more uh, classes on, stinky things. Well, well and I think, I think your point on, on letting people know ahead of time what it really does is <laughs> good because I could I could see like with your chemical or your, your kind of like this is gonna smell bad yeah and if that's gonna be a problem you should maybe like leave now well or this is gonna be messy and you might you might get stained that yeah. that's that's important to know or like um this is working with dead animals that that's important to let them know ahead of time yeah I've even had like uh I had somebody who was vegan in my paintbrush making class and I never thought about it but you're you're working with animal hairs and stuff and it's like oh okay I could see how that would squick somebody out who doesn't like dead things so yeah um a, a good description is really important <laughs> So that's about all I have time to give you today. I have, I have, I have this to do and study for. So thank you. Um, I will email you or text you some of the stuff that I um, talked about. And, um, yeah, and uh, I think that's all we have. Um, if anybody has any extra questions, uh, 
otherwise you are free to uh, get ready for your next question, uh, your next class. <laughs> Make sure you take care of liquids uh, in and out and uh, have a good day.